This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Hey guys, this is the Indie Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studios in the Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, PA. This is a show where we talk with people in and around and adjacent somewhat to independent professional wrestling. And we got a great one tonight. Uh, but of course, please check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Please su- support the Indie Mayhem Show on Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show and supporting this and all the other great shows. And thank you everybody there that's been supporting us and literally keeping the lights on here in the studio. And the internet's going. No thanks to Comcast. Uh, and <laughs> <laughs> that'll be changing soon. Uh, but anyways, though, uh, check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. And uh, please subscribe to this show, the Indie Mayhem Show, on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and Google Music, as well as the video versions on the Wrestling Mayhem Show YouTube and uh, Facebook page. And you can also subscribe to the Wrestling Mayhem Show Super Feed on many of those podcast outlets as well. So you can get everything mayhem that we do, even sometimes some experimental stuff. Uh, so uh, thank you, everybody, that has been doing that. Drop us a line, good times at wrestlingmayhemshow.com or 412-206-WFS0. If you have any questions for anybody that's been announced uh, for future interviews or if uh, you have any suggestions on people... Uh, we should be talking with on the show we do take a lot of uh, suggestions and and it's great because i mean we only know so many circles of wrestling here around the wrestling mayhem show uh universe and we appreciate uh, just any any awesome stories that we can get uh in the professional wrestling world <laughs> so this is uh if you're if you're joining us live you may notice the schedule is unofficial rise week as marcus man has uh as coined it apparently on social media and kicking that off and uh, and uh, or on your podcast feed this week is uh, somebody that uh, I, I've been watching his product for a while lately. I've been having a lot of fun with it uh, down there south of Pittsburgh. Uh, but the uh, current promoter of Rise Wrestling, Brandon K, joining us here in studio. Thanks for coming up and uh, hanging out with us. Oh, thanks for having me, man. I appreciate it. So we, uh, you know, kind of start with a little bit of a get to know you question, uh, and uh, it, it and also we kind of like, hey, if you're you should be a fan if you got into wrestling, right? Sure. Most of the time. So yeah, what be. is your earliest uh, memory of pro wrestling? Uh, my earliest memory. Uh, two weeks ago or three weeks ago, I wrestled Duke Davis. <laughs> <laughs> and it's all fuzzy before yeah, that. Yeah, after that. Before yeah, that, I can't. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, my, I, the one that comes to my mind is, and this is kind of silly, but I was young. I was a Hulkamaniac and relatable <laughs> cowboy bob orton oh wow branded hulk hogan and i believe it was like one of the saturday night main events and i was a little kid and i was, was just, a bob orner i, I, I don't I know it was it, a funk it could have been I, I see i thought it was funk and then in my head time wise wasn't it orton I, i've been in this i've been in this where like that that fuzzy wrestling yeah. memory like yeah. i thought it was piper that did this thing yeah it, originally you know, I, I thought it was i don't know and i couldn't find it online because i was trying to prep a little bit you know uh all I do remember is Hulk Hogan was laying down, brand mark on his chest, and I was crying. <laughs> I was so upset. But of course, you know, next the week after he hulked up on him and whooped him. <laughs> so you, so so first we're starting off. Brandon K. Hulkamaniac. Uh, I was a Hulkamaniac. I was a big. Hulk-a-maniac. I mean, who wasn't that came up in that era? Yeah, so yeah. except for the Ric Flair fans. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know who Ric Flair was for no, years. No. For years, mm-hmm. I didn't even know anything else existed. You know? So so. so you know, young age, kind of getting into wrestling. Yeah. W- at what point did you kind of say, hey, I think I want to get in and do this? Oh, it was, there was no point. Really. It was very sporadic. I guess there was a point. But uh, I was at a party with a friend. And we had a mutual friend named Muggsy. We went to school, high school with. <laughs> I know, great name, right? You, you sound- know this guy, too, though. That's the thing. But that was his nickname in high school. Okay. He, you know him now as Quinn Magnum. Okay. And uh, he was. we were talking about... Uh, I don't, we were talking about wrestling because we were big wrestling geeks, you know? And he was like, you know, Muggsy does that. I'm like, no. What? You, you, can't, you can't do that. Nobody can do that. I mean, that's WWF. That's all I knew. You know, I didn't know independence existed. And he's like, yeah, he's doing it next week. Let's go watch. And I went and watched. And I fell in love with it. You know, it was 
my first match I ever seen was uh, Gator, 500 pounds. A lot of people might not remembering, but it was a 500 pound monster wrestling Stone Cold Shirley Doe. <laughs> it was the greatest <laughs> spectacle. It was the first match. It was Stone so Stone Cold Shirley Doe. Yeah, he was doing like a. Uh, he's in the chat too. You have to remind me, Doe, if I'm screwing this up. But he had a, he covered all. He had long black hair and he covered it up with the the bald head. And I believe he was doing an asylum gimmick where he's kind of crazy. Didn't know who he, identity crisis kind okay, of thing. Okay. Okay. But I fell in love. That seems right. Yeah. That seems right. No, 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 that sounds right. <laughs> but the whole show was cool. And then I didn't really know Quinn in high school, but, you know, we knew of each other. I was a dork. He was a jock. So, you know, we mm-hmm. didn't talk about But after the show, I talked to him and he was like, I said, how did you do this? He's like, oh, I got into, the, I went through the school. And he's, then he said, I remember, never forget for some reason, you could go through the school. <laughs> I'm like no way, man. I was 170 pounds, a little. little I was gonna bit. say, were yeah. you like like terribly athletic at the time or anything? I played a lot of hockey, but I was mm-hmm. a dork. I was a skinny hockey grunt, you know. And uh, and I'm so impulsive though that I was like, yeah, all right, let's do that. <laughs> and I went through the damn school, and oh man, that I could write a book on those stories. This is cool. So uh, let me tell you one quick story because okay. it's funny. It's kind of like a Pittsburgh legend was. Before I went, I met I met Quinn at his house, and he was like, "Listen, don't embarrass me. You're the smallest guy in this promotion by far. And they're gonna beat you down, and they're gonna try to make you quit. Do not quit, you know." So I got there, and I met Paul Atlas, who I believe in the chat too. And Paul was a great trainer, and he's a rough trainer. And he said to me, "He goes, run these ropes. He showed me how and everything. He goes, run these ropes." And what I what I thought he said is, "I'll tell you when to quit." That's not what he said. So I'm running the ropes. I'm running the ropes. And I'm waiting for him to tell me to quit because I'm starting to get tired. And all the wrestlers are watching me. And I hear them starting to make, oh, he's slowing down. I'm like, oh, damn it. And I start going faster. And I'm back and forth. My back starts to bleed. I'm soaked in sweat. And this is another thing I got blown out of proportion where it ran for hours. But I ran for about 45 minutes straight. Not stop because I didn't know I could quit. And finally a wrestler came up. I think it was Crusher Hansen. And he was like, hey, are you going to quit sometime today so we can work out? And I'm like, you told me I couldn't quit. And he's like, I said stop when you're retired. And I was like, oh, you son of a bitch. But I had it so hyped in my head not to quit. You know, yeah, yeah. that's all I heard. And I just, I passed out and that was it. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, the good thing about it is it, it set the tone. It was like, oh, this, all right, this little bastard ain't going to quit. You know, mm-hmm. it, was, it was actually a good thing, even though I didn't feel good that night. <laughs> trying to sleep on that. How much of a wake up call was it getting into wrestling? I mean, it sounds like Quinn kind of kind of set you up to expect what what's going to go on uh, yeah i mean quinn quinn did a good job with telling me what to expect coming in but it's hard to it's hard to do especially back then it was it was like boot camp mm-hmm. and it's hard to put yourself mentally in the right place to accept it to do that you know because you're you're fighting the next day i came back for training i was i had bruises and blood and whatever on my back and i had to do all that again you know and it, that's yeah. not something you know you think you can get ready for it it's just something it's like a gut check every time you know um yeah i don't know um <laughs> and i think we were talking about you you trained with uh another uh pittsburgh legend we were talking about a little bit beforehand yeah yes. uh, her name <laughs> that's <laughs> what everyone's talking about. in case you haven't heard of him in wwe uh, uh <laughs> current, current gm of raw yeah. Uh, <laughs> is that what he's doing? I see. I don't want. I gotta watch stuff. I hear it's doing good. Hall mm. of Famer, right? Yeah. Uh, um, one night mm. member of the Shield. Yeah, oh, uh, nice. I understand. Uh, so. Yeah, I heard he had a son. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Good for you. Congratulations, Kurt. Uh, yeah, that's another thing. It, it, it's been blown out of proportion. You know how wrestling. Is. I didn't train Kurt Angle. <laughs> I trained with him. We trained together for months and months and months. Mm-hmm. What happens? He got signed, but back in the the Fed didn't have anywhere for them to work, and then they would do the dojo, but the dojo wasn't. Something they got to do all the time. And the dojo was... It was down in Florida somewhere. Okay. Yeah. It, the Funkin' Dojo. Funkin' Dojo, right? yeah, yeah. So, And this was before or around, or maybe they weren't running like the tracks facility. No, they weren't. Or there anything was... like that, which was like up in Stanford. Yeah, it was kind yeah. Of, uh, it was before all that. Yeah, yeah. That's how old we are. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he had nowhere to work, so he, he lived in Pittsburgh, so he, he just looked up the local promotion and he showed up one day. I didn't know who he was. All right, he won a gold medal. I'm like, oh, that's cool. All right. But we just ended up working. He had an incredible work ethic. Uh, I was further along because I was out of training by then. So we trained together, and I did show him a lot. But he showed me stuff, too. You know, it was like a mutual thing. If somebody was really training, it was Sean Evans. Sean Evans was always there with us, too. It was like we were the three amigos for a while. Mm-hmm. And Sean was – I wish everyone could have met Sean. You know, he died way too young. But uh, – 
was so emotional all the time. <laughs> <laughs> But Sean was the, if you're going to credit anyone for showing Kurt a lot of stuff, it's just mm-hmm. Sean Evans. Of course. Of course. Uh, moving on from that. So so you got into, you got past the training. Yes. Were you Brandon K right off the bat? Unfortunately. Unfortunately. <laughs> I hate to You admit. stuck with it. I, also, because we were talking about beforehand about you being online. Was it your online handle? Because <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like an AOL name. <laughs> yeah, I can't remember, honestly. Potentially. I'm sure it was, you know, but I was a name I got stuck with. I didn't even, I hated it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I looked like a, a, a local wrestler there by, I don't know if you know him, Vince Kaplack. Uh, so no, he's just an older wrestler. Then I looked a lot like him. They thought, so, Hey, we're going to give you a name. We're just going to give you you're, use K's last name and you're going to be this guy's brother. And then after it runs its course, we'll, you can, you can be renamed, you know, I'm like, Oh, all right, whatever. I'll just do whatever I'm told. You know? And 20 you know, years later, 20 years later, K. still Brandon K. <laughs> One of these days you'll change it, right? Yeah. <laughs> it, what happened is our tag team took off. Like it was supposed to, it, it was supposed to be a feud and end up being a tag team and it took off. And once you, established your name back in the day it was god forbid you could not change it you know mm-hmm. uh, so yeah i hate that name though. it's so boring <laughs> <laughs> oh, but you've been around the business for a while I, I know the first i encountered you was i know like probably i don't know 2012 or something in rwa oh, okay. uh, to be honest uh so so you've, you've, you've been through a lot like have you worked with every promotion in the area over that time yeah, yeah probably yeah. Uh, i'm trying to think of someone i didn't work for I don't know that I've worked for KSW. I may have, though. They've been around for a while? Yeah, I think they just uh, celebrated 18, 15 years. Oh, I've probably worked like that. for them. I was, so. I was a Pittsburgh quarterback when I started. My first seven years, I worked everywhere. It didn't matter. I worked five days a week if I, if I could, you know, like mm-hmm. up and down the coast and working everything in Pittsburgh. Was, that was the wrong way to do it. Personally, I think you should work one place and then get out on the road more. But mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I probably worked for everyone. I worked for IWC, RWA, PWX. All the big ones, yeah. Okay. Thanks, yeah. Um, anything notable uh, from that time? Like, you know, you talk about your chat, tag team kind of taking off for a little bit there. Mm-hmm. Like, how, how did you kind of um, settle into wrestling and kind of developing yourself? Uh, I learned a lot from Vinny, actually. I, I was glad that it, we started out as a tag team together because he was a, he was a veteran. He's a wise veteran. And he really took the time to uh, help me come out of my shell because I was still shy when I started. Even though I was doing this pretty flamboyant gimmick where it's coming out with costume tucks and ripping it off and whatever. Uh, I was still really shy and didn't really come out of my shell at all. But Vinny, he was a big Ric Flair fan <laughs> and he would strut around and he would, woo, and he was just a complete jackass in there. And then people loved him for it. Cause it was just, he just went out there and had fun and gave a lot of energy to the crowd. Mm-hmm. And I learned, and a lot of my success has been not the wrestling so much as just, I give the crowd a lot of energy when I'm out there. And I got that from him. Like, I think that's how I developed as a character. Um, through his tutelage, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, awesome, and, and of course, you got into training. Yeah. Um, talk a little bit about that transition. I trained people years ago. Uh, I don't know when. I couldn't tell you when. Cause I had a lot of look sees from the WWE and TNA, and so people were like, "Oh, it's a good idea if you train people." I was definitely not ready to train people back in the day. Mm-hmm. So, I, and basically, I don't. Re- the transition was, "Hey, you can you do this for us?" I'm like, "Yeah." The second time was more my decision. I'm I'm getting older, um, and I really wanted to be able to train again now that I'm much wiser after all the experiences and stuff and be able to be in the ring with the wrestlers, you know, not to be training them from the floor. So, uh, transitioning to that was great. It's actually my favorite thing to do in wrestling right now is to train mm-hmm. young talent. Uh, you mentioned getting looks for some of the big companies. Um, you know, did, you know, how, how were those processes for you? Cause this, this, this would be like, I'm familiar with the, how the guys are doing it these days. Mm-hmm. Um, and kind of the systems and everything from talking to them here on the show. Yeah. Um, and what, what kind of, what era was this that you were you know, getting these um, shots? We were talking about something on the way up. Cause it, my, my time frames might be wrong here. I'm going to give you mm-hmm. my, my best. And guess. we're very clear. We, we, we talked about how things are a little fuzzy because of the shots <laughs> had before the interview. Yeah. So, so, you so, know, I'll give you my feel bet. free to correct if you know this better than him in the chat room. Which some might like BC still <laughs> seems to know my career better than I do half the time. So if BC help me out here, but uh, I, I had some dark matches and things, and I believe they were in two thousand. I'm mm-hmm. ninety nine from the WWE. So kind of like a late Attitude Era. It definitely yeah. was. Uh, you know, I specifically remember my first dark match was against. Um, they were calling him Poppy Chew, but he ended up being SS Rios. Mm-hmm. So whatever era that was, he was coming out with Lita still. Um, that's actually a story there if you want to hear it. But uh, please, <laughs> <laughs> well, it's my it's my first one, and I walk in and 
I haven't seen Kurt for so long, a really long time. And, uh, he just comes up laughing and gives me a big hug, which was really nice. And I was like, Hey, uh, by the way, up. BC says this was in Detroit 2000. Okay, good. <laughs> Thank you, BC. I <laughs> see. I know. I knew he'd know. And, uh, which was cool. So I sat there and he was wrestling the rock. So I got to meet, you know, we were all, we sat, all sat there and talked about wrestling for a while, eating lunch, but that's not the story. Uh, the story is they're like, you're going to wrestle, uh, Poppy Chuo and he doesn't speak any English whatsoever. And he's a luchador. And I was neither a luchador <laughs> nor can I speak Spanish. And he had a manager by name Lita and I don't want to bury anyone. She was not a very nice person and didn't like her job as translator. <laughs> okay. So she was just like rolling her eyes and we're trying to talk about her match and she's just rolling her eyes going back and forth. And he eventually was like, screw her. Was just, and he walked away from her and told me to come with him. Uh, but then he tried to talk in English, but his English was, he didn't know English. So like mm-hmm. he would say arm dragging him at suplex. And then I was like, Oh my God, this is my first time <laughs> dark match. I think I might be 19 years old. <laughs> I'm, I'm so scared. And this guy don't speak any damn English, but we actually went out there and something happened. It went really well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Lita actually gave him a big hug at the end and said, Oh, you did so good. And I'm like, thanks asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that hurts me because Lita was one of my favorites. You know, I, I think, honestly, I, I think I caught her on a bad day because yeah, after, yeah. after her, she was a sweetheart to me. The rest of the time, we talked for a while and stuff. But before, man, I was just like, man, this girl hates my life. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know what I did to her. Mm-hmm. But. Awesome. Uh, so anything else? Any other memories from uh, uh, kind of that era and, and, and uh, tryouts? Uh, no, you know, I, I always remember the guys meeting them because most of them, you hear bad stories, but uh, man, I, I don't remember anyone that was really too much of a jerk. Like Christian was really cool and guys like that you, mm-hmm. they, that kind of took you in and knew you were a greenhorn and you were scared out of your mind to even be in that locker room with these guys. And remember, I'm still 170, 180 pounds, just small, you know. Uh, they, them guys were real accommodating and stuff. But there came to a point where I knew uh, I wasn't going to be there. That's a long story. I really don't, you know. We'll talk about it one day, another interview. <laughs> but I knew WWE wasn't going to be where I went. So we, then uh, I started going down south to Bill Barron's Wild Side and things like that. And mm-hmm. I eventually got on TNA. So that, so that process. And that was more fun. I got to work with AJ Styles on them guys down there. Before they, I didn't know who they were then. And they weren't nobody really then. They were just mm-hmm. Chris, uh, Christopher Daniels. But, but watching Christopher Daniels and AJ Styles before everyone knew who they were, wrestle, and you just can know that those two are going to. They're gonna be fantastic. They're gonna go somewhere, you know. Mm-hmm. And now look at it. <laughs> uh, what was it about like that environment? You know, you don't have to get into like what didn't fit in WWE, but what yeah. what was kind of attractive for that environment that you did end up in? That I did didn't like it. That or? you did like. Oh, I, I just I liked wrestling. I, I didn't mm-hmm. care. Honestly, I was never like I was like I need to be in the WWE. I, I want to make WrestleMania because of the fame. Mm-hmm. I didn't care about the fame as much as I just wanted to be really good at what I did. You know, I wanted to be acknowledged for being really good at what I did. You know, but. Nothing really attracted me except uh, this. If you're going to be the best at what you do, this is where you do it. You know. <laughs> we have some comments in the chat room. Yeah, I was <laughs> ask Brian what his favorite BDW match was and why it was with me. <laughs> it, my favorite BDW match was with Matt Connor. <laughs> Black Diamond Wrestling. It really was actually yeah. though, because I haven't wrestled it that much, but I love Matt Connor. Mm-hmm. I think he's a sleeper in the area that everyone misses missed out on in him. Glad we are not at Rise going to miss out on him. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, also, uh, Marcus uh, lets us know that uh, uh, Brandon wrestled all of your heroes, <laughs> which is pre- or, or trained with apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Marcus putting his owner over, and he's just trying to draw off people the next year. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. And uh, I think there's, uh, I'll keep scanning this for uh, comments, of course, as well as sure. we go here. Well, let's talk about Rise. Um, you know, Rise, uh, you know, I, I've been, I've been, Telling everybody about Rise. Mm-hmm. It's out there. It's out in Connellsville. So I don't know if Pittsburghers get a lot of chances to go out and see that. Yeah. What, um, how did Rise come to be? Well, uh, again, I'm getting old. Same way training came to be. I'm, I'm getting old. I know that uh, signs about done in the ring. It might be done. I don't know. Yeah, we'll figure that out in a few months. But uh, I, I, it's not, you know, I love wrestling. My whole life. I've loved wrestling. As a kid, I played it in the yard and, we, you know, in the pool or whatever. You'd have your wrestling match. And then my most of my life, I've been a wrestler now. Now i got to quit because I'm getting old. Wow. So I wanted to create a place that, that, that could give back because wrestling has done a lot for me, you know, and I wanted to give back to the younger guys and create a place that had a positive atmosphere for them to learn their craft, you know. Um, it really came out of uh, just that. I just wanted to uh, not quit wrestling, you know. And not just be a trainer. I just I wanted to take it to the next level, you know. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I'm trying to make millions of dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there's a lot of, uh, you know, I, we definitely talked with Marcus a bit about, you know, things going on in Rise and everything. But there's definitely like a different tone, it seems, than other promotions in the area that we've been seeing. Uh, can you talk about a little bit of the thinking going into that? Yeah, uh, it's very, it was very important to me from the get go that we didn't fall into the same. And I'm not, I don't want to, this is no dig on any promotion, but uh, just wrestling in general all over the place. And it was like it 20 years ago when I was traveling everywhere. It's just like it now. It's a very negative atmosphere. It's not a, a conducive to learning and we wanted to create a place that just stayed out of the mud it, that it was a positive place for uh the young guys because you know I, I think the future is in the young guys right now and i think we just wanted to create a positive place for them to learn their craft and have fun because a lot of fun and wrestling sucks let me tell you it, it's hard <laughs> on your body <laughs> like for a wrestler it's a miserable life you can't sleep at night because you know because of the match you just had and you're in mm -hmm. so much pain and you would you get 20 bucks it's, that doesn't cover nothing so you do it for the love of it but if the atmosphere is so negative that it makes you stop loving it it's 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 a horrible feeling i i had that feeling there was a time where i was quitting wrestling and it was early on because of the, such such a negative thing you know everything was so, so negative you know i hated it and uh, scotty gash actually kept me rolling in it but <laughs> Uh, so I'm losing. See, I'm rambling. Uh, no, that's fine. <laughs> but that's fine. Rise, you know, we wanted a place where these guys could come and have fun again mm -hmm. because I, nobody can pay them enough to do what they do, you know, but they do it because they love it because it's their art and that's their canvas out there. And I want to have a place for them to do it, you know? Awesome. And, you know, we were talking about a little bit, you know, it seems like the young guys kind of get an opportunity there and everything. Yeah. Um, you know, guys like, uh, you know, actually brought up your first grand, grand champion at the last uh, anniversary show last month, uh, Lee Moriarty, Lee, uh, winning Lee, that. Lee, <laughs> Lee, Lee, Lee. <laughs> hey, so, it and it seems like it's been a really, really good to see these guys kind of like have time. It's one of those, there's a lot of, I don't know if it's on purpose, but there seems to be a lot of long matches so these guys can go. Yes. You know, like we, 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 we commented on several occasions uh, and I think you got uh, some guys on your end too. It was like, Oh damn, that was 20 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. But it was like a good 20 minutes versus I've been through a lot of like, damn, that was 25 minutes. It did not need to be 25 yeah. <laughs> minutes. And, and it seems that things kind of fit in for that. For Good. Years. I'm glad it's going the right way because that's that's the danger of going 20 minutes. Is mm -hmm. Did we bore the hell out of them or did they just time go by real quick for them because they enjoyed it? You know, so uh, We tend to try to pick the guys that can do that, like Lee and them and Connor. Absolutely. I mean, that match was so fantastic. I didn't get to watch it that night, but when I went home and watched it, man, I was, I'm just blown away by those two guys. But uh, yeah, we want to give up guys a place to develop and five minute indie matches isn't going to help their craft in the mm -hmm. future. So if they're able to, we do try to give them as much time as we can. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, grand championship, like kind of a different vibe. Like, like I said, like, like it's rise. It's not something CW or WA. Yeah, yeah. There's actually no uh, W in it. At yeah. All. That was on by design as well. And I went mm -hmm. no W, no three letters. And so we ended up on rise, which I don't know how we ended up on rise. <laughs> you know how did you, that's my wife, everyone, because you can't see her. <laughs> and she's doing good. I know. Thank you all for asking about her all week. But uh, I don't know. I guess she did it. I don't know. <laughs> all I knew was I didn't want letters. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. It's a great venue, too, because you, you, I've seen this venue before with other promotions, and, and I actually got a chance to shoot it uh, for Stomp Out Cancer. It was kind of my first like seeing it with you. Yeah. Kind of the setup that you guys had done. It's a uh, – and I'll pull up the video here if I – if I, if I stop pulling up the accidental Windows update, sorry about that, guys, <laughs> on the video. Um, but it, it's an old movie theater down there at the, uh, was it the Laurel Valley Mall, I think it is? Yeah. And yeah, Mall. It, I mean, you guys have a screen, like a giant screen, and it's a really cool vibe to the place. Yeah. Do you like that screen? I'm a fan. Yeah, I'm a fan, too. I think it was a <laughs> son of a bitch to get up there. But I'm glad you liked it. I think it's a good way uh, to try to get some, tell some stories through the screen. But it's just a nice little production thing, right? Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's nice to cover that ugly wall for too. But it's a movie theater, so why not go with it? You know? Yeah. Um, also great that there's also concessions that sometimes get used in matches. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so tell me about, like, how are you feeling after, you know, that first year of Arise and what was accomplished with it? I, I feel pretty good where we're at. Well, going into it, we knew we're coming in an oversaturated market and a very politically uh, challenged market. So we knew mm -hmm. it was going to be... Uh, wrestling politically Yeah, challenged. wrestling. Yeah, yeah. Everywhere. But we knew it was going to be an uphill battle. So we plan on, you know... Uh, not doing well for the first year. And actually, we, I think we beat our projections for the first year. 
Mm-hmm. We, we've had this pretty mapped out, but our last few shows have really picked up for us. And it's kind of the time that we needed it to. Uh, and so after the first year, I could sit down and say, yes, I, that's what we a little bit better than we expected. Good. Yeah. Good. Um, so what, what are you looking for kind of projection for this? You know, is it just kind of keep growing at this point? Like, where would you like to see rise at? Uh, I want us to spend. I want Vince McMahon to buy us some. <laughs> <laughs> you want to sell that that tape library because yeah. Lee Moriarty and uh, David Lawless are on Monday Night Raw, right? Yeah, that's exactly right. <laughs> and we got to do the DVD <laughs> and and uh, and and twenty four seven special. <laughs> uh, well, you know, I want it to become a profitable business that I can sustain for a while. I, I yeah. want it to grow. I, I don't want to go too far too fast because that tends to be the problem with a lot of independent promotions. But I do want to grow as big as I can get it, you know, and if it, mm-hmm. I don't want there to be a limit on how well we can do, but we just have to take our time. Like if we try to get too fast then we'll fail. So ballpark shows and <laughs> yeah, some, you know, if, you know, 10 years from now, I mean, that'd be great. Fill in a wild about. thing stadium. <laughs> <laughs> See, I tell my students, if you're not aiming to main event WrestleMania, what are you doing? So if I'm not aiming to, you know, compete with WrestleMania, I would be a hypocrite, I guess. Mm-hmm. You know? So, awesome uh, uh chris in the chat room brandon k one of the greatest men i've ever met in the wrestling business people are really loving you in the chat room right oh. now. oh <laughs> hey chris uh, this is cool actually and i thought it on the way up this is 20 years ago today i had my first match and it was with you chris you squashed me in like a minute no it was like 30 seconds but <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> there you go um all right so so what are you um I, obviously you're not watching current product as much but you know between what you, you're seeing there or you're, maybe you're checking some other people out online for the promotion or something mm-hmm. what um what's kind of either stuff you're watching that's kind of inspiring you um or any individuals out there on the circuit that that you're kind of keeping an eye on and, and they're kind of impressing you out there that uh I, will, I don't watch a lot of WWE or anything anymore just because mm-hmm. uh, I'm pretty busy. But uh, I, I'm late to the game on Lucha Underground. I, that's something nationally that I do watch. I'm on the first season, but I enjoy it because I think like kind of like Rise, it has a real different vibe to it. You know, mm. uh, I, I guess it gets kind of corny later. I don't know. But so far, I've enjoyed it. Uh, locally, I, I watch mostly local stuff because of students or people sending me stuff just to critique or whatever. Uh, I, you know, I'm going to put over my own guys, but I love Matt Connor. I, I think he's people have wasted his potential he's such a great potential one of the best matches i've seen on the indie circuit it was actually at bdw and it was with uh matt connor and tony johnson what probably the top five matches i've ever seen anywhere such a good match but uh so i watch a lot of matt and lee moriarty and, and london alley and because i have to watch my students but i also enjoy watching my students because there's, there's a sense of pride of how well they're doing mm-hmm. lee's fantastic oh man uh, he might have surpassed his teacher i don't know <laughs> don't tell him <laughs> He might, um, in, he might be in the chat. Yeah. <laughs> he, he tends to pop up for this. <laughs> awesome. Um, what is... Man, I don't know if I want to frame this different. Well, first, okay, we're going to do two rounds of this. Okay. First, what's the best and the worst thing about indie wrestling? Uh, the best thing for me, and this will be like a perspective thing for me, is I love to teach it now. So for me right now, it's seeing all the young, hungry talent come in, like Duke Davis and, and Gannon Jr. and Lee, and just w- helping them develop. I love that. I love watching them develop on their own. Uh, to, to see that passion that a lot of us old vets kind of lose at, the, at this stage in the game, but to see it in their eyes, it, it's, I mean, it's magical, you know, they're starting this journey and it's, it's, it's a cool journey. Uh, what was the other negative? Something I don't like about indie wrestling. Uh, pl- pl- politics is always going to be the answer. You probably get that answer more than anything. So let me give Yes. I think, <laughs> let me give just a different route. I think guys, and I've seen it more this year, last year, I guess, since January, uh, need to be more humble anymore. I, I feel like there's a, the egos growing in the area. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't mean that in a bad way. No, I, I don't know how you mean that in a good way, but <laughs> <laughs> I, I think guys need to be more humble because I, th- I see it. I see people not developing because they're not humble. They, they, they start to think they're better than they are. Then they stop listening to advice. They stop critiquing their own matches and then their work starts to suffer. So it's like the more I see someone brag about themselves and I keep watching them, the more I see them declining in the ring on how good they were, you know? So I, I feel like that could be a bad thing for, if it catches on in the area like a cancer. So mm-hmm. for me, that's a big negative. Obviously, politics first, but that's a big negative right now. I like to see guys be a little more humble and keep being thirsty for knowledge and learning. You know? What's the best? I, I know you talked a little bit about it in the past year, but what's the best and worst thing about having your own, pro- own promotion that you're in? <laughs> 
Uh, best thing is I'm the boss. I can do what I want now. <laughs> best thing, honestly, is uh, the relationships I've been building with a lot of people because uh, I'm a pretty good introvert. That I don't know a lot of people know that, but I don't talk to a lot of people. But because I have this business now, I, I have to get close to a lot of like I have a creative team that I talk to all every day now, and I'm getting close with them. They're friends, you know. Marcus Mann is on a great job. He's a workhorse. Every day he's on this, and Shirley Doe, a great mind for the business. Jake Garrett, another great mind. Uh, just being around these guys and, and it's, it's a definitely a pleasure for me. You know, uh, I'm a, I feel like a fan again in a way, even though I own the promotion, I feel like a fan cause I, you know, they're creating some stuff and I get to watch them. I'm like, yeah, this is great. You, you get, you get to sit back and, yeah, and, 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 and be, get to that spot again and, yeah, and enjoy it and uh, no pressure, you know, like, uh, uh, and do your one match a year and do my <laughs> one match a year <laughs> and everything's good. I get to play. It's like my own sandbox, but, uh, no, these guys, everybody's working hard, and I'm proud to be on that team. So for me, that's a big positive of having that promotion. Uh, negative is just, you know, it's tough because uh, indie promotion is a very small business and it's a very mm -hmm. limited market. So, yeah. uh, you know, we're pinching pennies, you know, and we're fine. Rise ain't going anywhere. We're doing well. But, <laughs> you know, it's tough. The negative part is we need to grow the market. We need to grow the customer base, mm -hmm. not just us. The whole area needs grown. You know, uh, RWA, IWC, whoever, PWX, I'm, every one of them should be saying the same thing. We need new customers, you mm -hmm. know? Uh, so, I, I don't know. Is that a negative? <laughs> I ramble. It is. It Can is. you tell I ramble? Is, uh, <laughs> right, I want to touch base with the chat room again. First, Laura Loveless says, hi, Teach. Hey, Laura. And uh, Ty Cross has been bugging for a while for you to put him over. Ty Cross <laughs> is... Who's Ty Cross? <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding, Ty. I love you. Yeah, Ty's awesome. <laughs> uh, and other 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 great things. There's something about uh, Scotty Gash went to South uh, Africa for bocce ball. Hey. <laughs> so from our historian and uh, and some again uh, great things said about that uh, BDW match you were talking about with Matt Connard and Tony Johnson. Um, BC still guy. He's like. <sighs> I should have had him. Encyclopedia of You need to get him. I should have had him interview you <laughs> yeah, in the long run. He could just. He probably could have just. I, I him only. About me. I only <laughs> can like know a little bit of your history in in comparison. So. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, BC, you're gonna write my autobiography. <laughs> this is a good point because this is. Um, and this is a the conversation I've had with a lot of people about indies and stuff. As a fan from Ken, mm -hmm. uh, as a fan, he likes that after the show handshake at the uh, at the door at the end, like from the boss oh, in good. that suit jacket. <laughs> Did you think you'd be wearing it? Well, I guess you were tearing off the suit back in the day, right? Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, I was. There you so go. So it's you go. like you've come full circle. Full circle. <laughs> this is definitely a different suit, but uh, I'm good. I'm glad they appreciate. It. I I appreciate every fan that comes. So like, it's nice to as they're leaving. Hey, thanks for coming. You know. Jax, all right, we're getting into the hard hitting questions. All right, we're Jack Pollock. Jax Jordan, well, uh, ask him why his <laughs> kick pads always smell so bad. Wash your stuff, Kay. Uh, that's one of my old students, Jax. <laughs> <laughs> I smell like a man, Jax, because I work very hard. <laughs> and another tie in here says he's 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 talking to his teach on the way to his on to what on the way to the gym, keeping hungry. Ah, good. Good. So. He actually just started back training again. I'm, I'm glad he's back. He's a big guy. There you go. He's my secret, though, so I'm not telling anybody about him. Well, <laughs> if people want to find out, obviously, as of this recording, there is a show this weekend. But generally, whenever you guys listen to this interview, if they want to find out what you guys are doing with Rise Wrestling, how do they find that online? Uh, we got our website, www.risewrestling.com. It gets updated uh, pretty frequently. Um, we have the Facebook page, Rise at Rise Wrestling. The Twitter is at Rise Wrestling. The Instagram is at Rise Wrestling, right? All good? All right. Got the wife keeping me straight on You got your social media manager over there <laughs> yeah. making sure you got it all right? Yeah. Uh, thank you, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> Are you personally online anymore? Uh, yeah, I do have a Brandon K. Facebook page. Okay. Uh, couldn't tell you. I think it's Brandon K. Pro Wrestler, maybe. Okay. I don't know. I don't know Twitter? It. I do have a Twitter. I just got it last year. <laughs> As old guys getting getting caught up. Uh, it's at, it's Brandon K42. I do know that one. At Brandon K42 for the awesome. Twitter. And we were talking about, I don't think we talked about it here on the show beforehand. We were talking about how you were rocking the GeoCities page. I was rocking it. Back just, in the day. Yes. Tell us, tell us a little bit about what you're telling me there. <laughs> Unfortunately. How awesome was this Brandon K personal oh, wrestler page it was back what, what year was this i believe it's my first year 1998 1998 yeah. geo cities <laughs> yeah. was rocking we yeah. all had them we had a brandon k online big header on the page mm -hmm. we had a picture gallery with like seven pictures you know what you know what <laughs> uh uh shane helms was just on the edge and christian podcast uh this past week yeah talking about how he was one of the first wrestlers that had a had a had a uh 
website. Uh, I know about uh, that, Shane. I know, I have to ask him. I actually got to work him. Uh, this is one of the last big guys I've worked. And how, oh, that's cool. <laughs> Name drop, just for no reason. Actually, that was just me thinking out loud. <laughs> but uh, no, I, I mean, I had one in 98, and it was yeah. terrible, and the crowd razzed me for years about it. I'd come out, welcome to Brandon K. Online. Wait, 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 wait. There was, it said stuff when no, you went to but the they, website? No, it, it just, oh. you know, they had the banner, Brandon K. Online, but then mm-hmm. they gave it life <laughs> when I came out. And, and then I'd be wrestling, I'd be in the middle of a spot, it'd be like, welcome to my picture gallery. You just hear it out <laughs> It was terrific, actually. Which I think we're the defaults. Ga- it might have been Scotty Gash, you bastard. Gash. I don't know why I yell louder. Like, <laughs> I'm talking to Chad. <laughs> I think it was Gash. He was a fan at the time of Brandon K. And mm-hmm. he used to... Ra- Did he? Yeah. He used to razz me to something fierce. Then I had to carry him for three years. And then and then <laughs> BC wants to know when we're going to see the Brandon K. versus Super Hentai rematch from 2000. <laughs> <laughs> hey, still active. Yeah. You know, I don't know. He keeps saying he doesn't know how much longer. So we maybe, actually, brief- I mean, could you imagine if Super Hentai ran his own promotion? <laughs> we actually briefly talked about that uh, in the fall, I think, wasn't it? Yeah, in the fall. I think that might be a possibility. Mm-hmm. We both agreed that we wanted to get in a certain degree of shape. I don't know. Do you know the history of that, that match? No. Uh, we it was just, it was just a really good match. You know, like we just meshed really well. It was, uh, Is it on a VHS somewhere we can find it? I actually <laughs> I believe you can see it on YouTube. And okay. what it was, it was two. It was a, it was we're in an area with everyone was really big, like giants, right? And me and Hentai were the two small guys, mm-hmm. and they put us in a match, in some tournament. I don't remember, and we rocked. We just meshed so well, and the crowd was really into it. We ended up wrestling for the next year everywhere because everybody wanted that match on their card. So there's a certain degree of uh, expectations that comes when we wrestle. Is this it? There it is. is it, the old VHS the, quality. That is the match here. And again, <laughs> you just you type that in. It's there. Uh, Brandon K42 on the YouTubes, uh, by the way, uh, for all the hot, hot Brandon K action. And uh, there it is. There's, uh, well, you know, we were talking about lighting in your venue. Yeah. I, I think you got a one up on uh, on this one. Yeah, I can't remember. I think it was look, at the, look at that mass silhouette wrestle. <laughs> you know, I mean. Oh, man. <laughs> We we, had, we did that match and so, we did it at IWC. We did it at mm-hmm. PWX. We did it at uh, CWF at the time. Uh, it was good. I mean, we just meshed well. And so we, back to the question, I would like to do it again. Hentai. I don't know if you're still interested, but you know, hit me up. He's got to find that mask again, whatever that was, <laughs> as well. Well, thank you so much for joining us. It's been great chatting with you. It's great thank seeing you. what you're bringing to the area with Rise Wrestling. It's been a lot of fun to go down to those shows as a fan. Uh, and uh, and I'm hoping to see you guys do some really cool things here in the new year. Yeah, thanks for having us, and thanks for all the good things you, you say about us. I've been watching you. Thank you. <laughs> all right, check it out. And again, we're going to be talking about a lot of guys that do with a lot of guys, and we have recently, of course, that, that have been with this promotion and around the area and doing some really cool stuff. Uh, so check all those out at WrestlingMayhemShow.com so you don't miss an episode. Please subscribe. Indie Mayhem Show and Wrestling Mayhem Show Super Feed over on your podcatcher wherever you like to listen to your audio ear hole podcasts uh and of course video versions over on the wrestling mayhem show.com indie wrestling.us we post them as well and you can check out a lot of guys that we talked about just plug those names in the search super hentai brandon k they're all in there somewhere uh and we are running a sale right now if you're catching this in the month of january with the coupon code new year 2018 make sure i get the right year because my checks have been written wrong this past week uh <laughs> and uh, you'll get 33 percent off all digital downloads there uh for the rest of january thank you so much everybody joining us in the chat room please keep an eye on our facebook page wrestling me i'm showing indie indie wrestling.us uh to find out when we have events coming up that will be live streamed and you guys can participate like the uh all the guys basically the entire rise roster has been hanging with us how half of pittsburgh wrestling has been hanging with us in the chat room tonight from the looks of things thank you so much everybody for joining us uh, supporting each other and it, and of course until next time for everybody out there support indie wrestling this show is a member of the sorgatron media podcast network find out more at sorgatronmedia.com